Over the years, the true meaning of Christmas has been lost. In 2021, we use this holiday as an opportunity to exchange gifts or pretend that Will Ferrell is funny. But in reality, Christmas is about one man. A man who would change history forever. And that man is Santa Claus, Lord of Lapland. When he first became chieftain of Lapland, Santa was gluttonous, greedy, and lazy. He was also a giant. At the time, Lapland was not the sprawling empire that it is today, just a small province in Scandinavia. But Santa was a big man with big ideas, and he knew he needed money to achieve his goals. The first of these goals was securing an alliance with modern-day Estonia. He achieved this goal by marrying a woman named Praurim, who we now know as Mrs. Claus. She quickly became an icon of Laplandian fashion. This marriage elevated Santa to become the head of the Sami culture, which is a Laplandian word for Christmas. Santa became fascinated with the ideas of ledgers. He was going to be making lists, and he was going to be checking them. Frequently. After receiving a vision from an angel or something, Santa started renaming the cities in his kingdom to Grotto and Toy Factory. He also changed his newborn son's name from Mellet to Dasher. In the early days of his rule, Santa's kingdom was constantly under threat from raiders, and he lost many close friends. On the plus side, Santa negotiated an excellent deal on a new carp pond. And so the Christmas tradition of building a pond was born. After a crushing defeat at the Battle of Grotto, Santa swore he would have vengeance on his rival, a man named Ruigi. No relation. Santa forged an alliance by betrothing his son Dasher to the daughter of a nearby family, most of whom had scaly skin. Scaly skin like a carp, very festive. Leaving Mrs. Claus to handle the business side of things, Santa declared war on Ruigi the Foolish. The first major battle of the war did not go well, and Santa was seriously wounded. Without the assistance of his scaly allies to the north giving their lives to stall for time, Santa would certainly have lost the war. The fish people died so that Christmas might survive. Santa rallied his forces and took control of Ruigi's capital. He also took one of Ruigi's eyes. And so the Christmas tradition of getting revenge on your enemies was born. By the time Santa returned home, he received the joyous news that Ruigi the Foolish had passed away. Santa began to laugh. It was a deep, hearty laugh. If you listen carefully on Christmas Eve, you will still hear him celebrating the demise of his rival. Still laughing, Santa raised his armies to wipe out what remained of Ruigi's pathetic dynasty. The Lord of the Fish People, Santa's ever-faithful ally, offered him one of his own concubines as a gift. Santa politely declined, declaring that he only had eyes for Mrs. Claus. This went down very well with the old trouble and strife. The war with Ruigi's son was soon over, and Santa added another holding to his lands. The Kingdom of Lapland had grown to an impressive size, much like Santa himself. As Dasher grew older, Santa knew he needed an education, and he knew just the man to deliver it. The first lesson was that you can expand the size of your empire by waging war against your neighbour for no reason. This was a war which Santa promptly won, because nobody stands in the way of Christmas. And yet, despite all of his successes, Santa felt that there was something missing in his life. He didn't have time to dwell on this thought, however, as one of the neighbouring countries had decided they had a claim on Lapland. This was not the case, so Santa went to war with them preemptively. The army of Christmas was now so powerful that the war ended quickly and soundly. With the war over, Santa was free once more to reflect on what was missing in his life. He left on a pilgrimage to the woods to find himself. After visiting a particularly nice grove, Santa's loyalty to the faith was proven. And so the Christmas tradition of going for a walk was born. After his pilgrimage, Santa made the strange claim that he knew the location of all children at all times. In support of this belief, he did find his son when he was hiding under the table. On the other hand, he had forgotten about a child he'd imprisoned years ago who starved to death in his dungeon. No conclusive evidence in either direction. Some months later, Dasher was on a hunting trip with his father when he shot a reindeer with an arrow. While Dasher grinned sadistically like a maniac, Santa chastised him, saying that that behaviour was naughty and not nice. In an attempt to model good lordly behaviour, Santa held the first Christmas feast. But alas, disaster struck when he discovered there was no wine. Before anyone could notice this mistake, Santa spent half of Lapland's treasury on getting some wine in. And so the Christmas tradition of overspending was born. 
Staggering around in a drunken stupor, Santa spoke at length with Mrs. Claus about military formations, a mutual interest of theirs. The bond between the couple was stronger than ever. And yet, Santa felt something calling to him. It was as if the stars themselves were screaming at him, urging him to join them in the stratosphere. This strange cosmic desire only worsened when Santa learned that the Lord of the Fish People had passed away at the ripe old age of 44. In response to this troubling news, Santa isolated himself, gorging on mince pies. The next time anyone heard from the Lord of Christmas, he too had passed away. But Santa lives on. This Christmas, if you watch the night sky closely, you may hear him. You may hear his dread cackle tear across the sky as he continues to celebrate the death of his rival, Ruigi. As for Mrs. Claus and Santa's son, Dasher, they lived on, but their story is a story for another day. Merry Christmas, everyone. May your fish ponds be deep, and may the screams of your rivals echo festively through the halls of your home.